Hi, my name is Mike Stankovich, and uh, me and my wife Kendra have been blessed with four wonderful children. Our oldest, Wyatt, is six. Our second, uh, Isabel, she is four. And our two newest additions, Quinlan and Danica, are our twins, and they're just about four months old. Um, each of our kids were premature. Wyatt was five weeks early, uh, but not, did not spend any time in the NICU, thankfully. Um, and Izzy was a couple weeks early as well. I think she was 37 and a half weeks when she was born. Um, our two youngest though, uh, Danny and Quinn, they were born at 31 weeks. Um, it was a, a long journey with them. Um, you know, we had a lot of false scares, uh, the first of which happened at around 26 weeks where we thought they were being born, um, which was very stressful, you know, thinking that, you know, your, your child's gonna be born uh, very early to where many more complications could arise um, but thankfully they decided to, to stay in and um, you know grow a little more before coming out to the world. Uh, when they were born uh, at 31 weeks they were pretty healthy you know they were uh, Danny was three pounds 14 ounces Quinn was three pounds 15 ounces uh, so for their age they were a, a decent weight and decent size which was you know comforting. Um, they, uh, they started out with breathing treatments almost immediately as, you know, their lungs weren't quite developed enough and I think that's standard protocol for most hospitals. But uh, it was just, it was very weird to see them, you know, with their little breathing masks on. Um, you just basically didn't even want to touch them for fear that, you know, they're so small and so fragile that you might hurt them in some way. Uh, I know that when they were first born, um, you know, I was told, you know, make sure you don't rub their skin, you know, you know, you want to comfort them and caress them, but, you know, um, that can set off pain receptors for them and, you know, make them hurt. So, you know, you had to be careful with what you did. So, um, I was very hesitant to hold them when we finally were able to, um, and it was just, it, it was nice to finally hold them. Um, it probably probably wasn't for at least a couple days before I think I held them for the first time um, and you know it was they're, they're extremely light compared to our other two when they were born um, and it's just you know these little small packages that you held in your hands uh, but it was still um, it's still worrying because again just because they I, I mean our, our daughters progressed very well very quickly you know after I think two days two or three days the the breathing mask was taken off and they just had the cannulas for the air into their noses and I think after a week of the cannulas they were on room air breathing and they they continued to to grow and um, get stronger um, our original hospital that we gave birth at, they their NICU was completely full, so they had to be transferred down to um, one of the hospitals down in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, we live near the city, so um, it was quite a haul each day to see them. Uh, we, you know, we we didn't fight with the with the staff down there at all, but you know they they worked with us and you know to get our daughters transferred back up to. Um, our original hospital that way they're close to home we could see them more frequently and for longer periods of time without having to continue on with life um, jobs taking care of the of their brother and sister um, and such but you know it, it it took a toll on us you know we we really struggled each day to make sure that we left at a certain time we were back at a certain time and everything was just on a schedule on a schedule on a schedule um, and and those you know precious few moments where we could just sit there and watch them in their little Isolates. Um, again, it was heartwarming to be near them, but it was also very, you know, it, it freaks me out because I didn't want to hold them for fear that, you know, they would be out of their isolates for too long and something would go wrong. Um, you know, the, the staff was great there and they, they were always there on hand, so if anything were to go wrong, you know, I'm sure that they would have acted swiftly, but just that first experience of having, you know, your child in the NICU is. You know, it's, it's, it's completely different than just having a newborn altogether. Um, you know, it's it, it was after those first two weeks that they were at the transferred hospital, we came back, they were, got transferred back up um, at the original hospital. They were there for a week, and then unfortunately, everything with 
the coronavirus started locking places down and our hospital completely shut down to anyone outside. Uh, no visitors whatsoever. Um, and you know, that, that took a big toll on Kendra, um, which started worrying me. Uh, as a little background, after our daughter was born, um, maybe about a month or so, uh, Kendra's postpartum depression really kicked in and that entire summer after Izzy was born she was in and out of the hospital um, with inpatient programs programs um, with thoughts of suicide and even one or two attempted suicides that we were able to thankfully um, get her through but as soon as we were cut off from Danny and Quinn, you know, immediately my mind went to her. It's like, okay, how is she processing it? How is she handling it? How is she going to get through this? How can I help? Um, because I know where, I know how far we've come um, since then. You know, it's been three years, a very long three year journey of helping her get in the right space and, you know, the support that she needs uh, full time. But you know, it's it's still that worry crept back up in my mind, you know, am I going to lose Kendra again to the hospital? Is she going to go to inpatient stays? Um, thankfully, we worked with um, her therapist and things like that, and we were able to get her into an IOP, an in, um, intensive outpatient program where she could meet uh, a couple days a week and work through any struggles that she was having. Um, and then we would talk too, you know, we would talk all the time to make sure that, you know, what I was doing was appropriate. I wasn't pushing her um, too hard to, you know, do certain things. And also I wasn't completely lax either in trying to just give her all the space that she needs. Um, so that was one of the bigger worries that I had um, as the hospital was kind of shut down. And, uh, at that point then, we were, um, you know, we didn't see our girls other than through pictures and video chatting with the nurses for five weeks. And as I said, it, it, it took a toll on both of us, more so Kendra. Um, and I, I just did my best to uh, support her and get her through that time. Um, but really, you know, it, it, it takes a toll on, on us partners too. Um, you know, we're, we're missing our kids, but you know, our, our spouses are there struggling extremely hard with, you know, postpartum depression, you know, hormones still um, equalizing out in, in their bodies. So, you know, you just, got, you just gotta do your best to be there for them. Uh, but you gotta do your best to be there for yourself too. Um, you know, I've, with Kendra's, um, previous postpartum depression, you know, I also decided to see a therapist to talk through, hey, how do I help her better? How do I get, you know, myself in the right headspace so I can help her? Um, and, you know, that, that really helped me to just make sure that, you know, my mind was always clear enough to see when she was downtrending and, you know, give myself the tools that I need to meet her in those moments and help her in those moments. Um, so, you know, that's, that, and then again, after those five weeks, finally the girls came home and, you know, we, we've we been adjusting now to a uh, family of four, or, you know, family of six, four kids, two adults, but, you know, it's, it's, it's been fun. It still feels a little unreal, because it feels like at times we're, you know, focusing on the twins, trying to make sure that they're taken care of. And then our older son and daughter, you know, they're, they're, they're needing attention too. So it's a, it's a big, big juggling, uh, you know, a bit, a bit of juggling needs to happen through all that. But, you know, I guess the, the biggest encouragement that I can leave off here is that, you know, whether your children go through the NICU, whether your spouse is going through postpartum depression, um, the biggest thing that you can do is just talk, you know, talk to them, talk to professionals, talk to friends, um, because you never know what other people are experiencing. And when you're going through these certain situations, a lot of times you feel like you're the only one going through it. And, you know, 
be feeling that sense of isolation you're you're, you're the only one it's only happening to you uh, can really beat you down but you know if you're talking to others find out their stories realizing that you're not the only one reaching out to people and talking to them just in general about how you feel um, can alleviate a lot of that stress um, it doesn't alleviate any of the responsibility but at least it, it can help you um, push forward in uh, any way that you need, need to get going so